This is Flappy Boyd, Chapter 7. We need to keep score. The way that the player scores a point is simply that they pass through the gap between any pair of pipes touching the proximity trigger and, of course, not touching one of the pipes. So the first thing I'm going to do here is create a place where we can store this score value. And, of course, that's going to be a variable. In CryEngine, we call variables game tokens, and we manage those through the database. Tools, Database View. The database view actually tracks a whole bunch of things. What we're interested in right now is game tokens, so go ahead and click on this tab. We can organize these into libraries, but this is a fairly simple game, so I'm just going to add a new item. I have the option of putting it into a group, kind of like folders, like Flowgraph does. The most important thing I'll say about this is that we want to indicate the data type in the name of our game token. This is just good programming practice. So we have five data types, integer, floating point, string, vec3, and boolean, which is true-false. Same thing that you've already seen in Flowgraph. Since the score is just going to be a simple integer, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm going to just preface it with int, or you could just use i for integer, and then I'm just going to call it score. So here's a place where one of the most common mistakes gets made, and it will drive you crazy if you do it. You want to make a habit of as soon as you create a new game token, double click in the type column and set this. Because otherwise, you're going to be stuck with the default Boolean. And if you think that you're feeding it integers or floating point numbers and you're wondering why you're getting bizarre results, it's because the data type isn't correct and it's only evaluating the information you're feeding it in terms of whether it's true or false, something or nothing. And that's a very difficult problem to track down and flow graph because you keep thinking it's something in your script. So I'm going to set this to integer. The next practice that I strongly want to encourage you to adopt as far as game tokens go is initialize your game tokens, not here, but in your Flowgraph script. So I'm going to create a separate section just for scoring here. And as usual, I'm going to start with a game start node. Even though I have one over here, I just don't want to have really messy connector lines going all over the place. So I'm going to create another one. It may not be entirely obvious, but game tokens are managed under the mission folder. So I simply want to do game token set. I want to set the value of it on game start. I'll go ahead and trigger this. Which game token is going to be the only one I've created for this level, which is int score. And of course, my initial value is going to be zero. Next thing is I need to display this information on screen. Well, you already know how to do this. We have this very simple mechanism called a display message under the debug group. And although later we're going to build a full-blown user interface using Flash or scale form, that's a fairly complicated chapter. So for now, we're just going to test all of the flow graph nodes and make sure that we're getting the right values at the right time just by displaying it with the display message, which is a good practice before you introduce other complexities. We don't need to tell it an entity on which it displays the message, so don't worry about the red in this case. We just need to use this value to trigger the show and, of course, as the message itself. And that should be good enough to get us started. Let's save F11 for full screen and test. And immediately we see a zero in the upper left-hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on it so you can actually see it quite tiny. So let's make it a bit more visible just by changing the size. I don't know. Let's try eight something that's not white, just so it comes out better against the white clouds. I'll choose kind of a saturated, bold, yellowy orange. Pretty easy to read. Next, we need to increment that score every time one of these score triggers is touched. So I'm going to select my score trigger entity and add it as an entity node. And you'll see that we have this enter event right here. And what I want to do is modify my game token. So under the same mission folder, I'll see game token modify. I want to trigger that on the enter event. And which token I want to modify is, of course, my INT score. The operation that I want to do is not setting the value, but adding to the value. The kind of data I want to add is an integer. And the value of that is going to be 1. And then we have this little same challenge that we've had many times, which is how do I feed two possible inputs to the same display message? I could use another one of these, but it would actually end up on top of this thing. 
and I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to insert a logic any node here. And what I'm going to do is also map this here because I'm going to need to feed the same out value both from start, from game token set, and from game token modify, and use that to trigger both showing the message and also passing on the content of the message, which is simply our integer. Let me neaten this up a little bit. Let's just test this for our first score trigger, and if it works, we can copy that same logic to our other score trigger. So zero, and nothing happens. If you're new to CryEngine, it might take you some head scratching to figure out why this is going on. But if you think about it, it's got to have something to do with our entity here. Assuming that we're pretty confident in our flow graph. It's a fairly simple flow graph. So let's take a closer look at the properties of this proximity trigger. If we scroll down here, we're going to see something called only player. And if you remember, I talked about earlier that as far as game SDK is concerned, there is only one player. And that is that first person shooter guy that we worked so hard to disable. So right now, the proximity triggers only sense whether that guy touches them. And of course, he's sitting down on the ground taking a vacation. So this is not going to do us any good. We're going to need to turn this off, and we're going to need to do it to all of the score triggers. And what we're going to need to make it react to is our particular entity. So that's going to be this property right below it, only selected entity. And we'll just simply paste in the name of our Flappy Boy. I'm going to go back to my Level Explorer. I'm going to copy and paste this text. So there's no chance I can make a mistake by typing it. Select my score triggers, come back to only selected entity, and paste in the name. Again, it's nice that the interface shows you the names, even though under the hood, CryEngine is thinking in terms of entity ID numbers. So that should improve our code considerably. Let's test it. Jump, jump, jump. And we've got a score. So all we need to do now is make four different proximity triggers all feed this game token modify. And of course, again, we're going to use our friend Logic Any. So I'm going to select all three of these proximity triggers, add them as entity nodes, and then it's just a matter of arranging them on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and stack them a little tighter than I usually do. They're all doing the same kind of thing. And it makes no difference which of these inputs I use. There are 10 available. And then I'm going to kind of make a stylistic choice and neaten it up that way. Collapse this to its two used inputs and uh, put a comment box around it. And just call it scoring. Give it a little more room as usual. Maybe make it a different color. Just so it's set apart from everything else. Whatever you care to use. Do a little bit of green. Let's save, F11, and test. Should be able to score an infinite number of points, presuming I'm not clumsy enough to die. There's our second pipe, our third pipe, our fourth pipe, and we should just continue on to infinity. There's only one slight enhancement that I'd like to make to finish this chapter, and that's simply to add the word score in front of this number, so there's no chance the player wonders what does that number mean. It's a pretty simple game, and of course, it wouldn't be hard to figure out that that's the score since it's the only message on screen. But this is a good practice and a chance to introduce another kind of node, which adds two strings together. We use a word called concatenation, which simply means put one word after the other. This is a string function it's right here. And my first string is going to be the word score. I'll put a colon and a space after it. And then my second one is actually going to be the number. These two get added together. I'm going to use this to actually set and then replace the message here. This one I can feed straight through because it's no big deal. Make my comment box around my expanded nodes. Save. Test.
And that's it for Chapter 7.